Welcome back to Dirty Medicine's Dirty Biochemistry series. In this video, we're going to be talking about the HMP shunt. Now, the HMP shunt is also sometimes referred to as the pentose phosphate pathway. So you may have heard this referred to as the HMP shunt, the HMP, the PPP, or the pentose phosphate pathway. But any of those names that just came out of my mouth all refer to the same thing. Now, before I get into this video, I want to start with a quick overview and frame today's video because it's actually part one of two parts in this series. So part one is going to be on the HMP shunt. And as you'll see, as we move through this video, there's a lot of synergy that takes place between this pathway and the glutathione reductase pathway. Now, the glutathione reductase pathway is going to be part two. So I would watch this video first, which will be part one on the HMP shunt, or the pentose phosphate pathway, and then watch part two about the glutathione reductase pathway. Because again, those two pathways work in tandem with one another. They work in this sort of synergistic way where the two pathways are constantly churning out reactants and products that the other one can use so that together they can achieve the body's function when it comes to the biochemical pathway of dealing with free radicals. So that's a big overview of what these two videos are going to cover. And I don't expect you to be comfortable with this at all, right? Because I haven't talked about it yet. So if you're really confused and you're really scared about all these things that just came out of my mouth, then I want you to take a deep breath and relax because when you get to the end of these two videos, all of this biochemistry will make beautiful sense to you. So with that said, let's, let's start with part one. So part one is on the HMP shunt. So the HMP shunt has one goal. The main goal of the HMP shunt is to produce NADPH, okay? It is absolutely crucial that through the HMP shunt, you get the generation of NADPH. Now, the question would be, the logical next question would be, why do we need NADPH? Well, NADPH is required for glutathione reduction, for fatty acid synthesis, and for cholesterol synthesis. So in addition to working on glutathione reduction, which is going to be in part two of this series, it actually also contributes to fatty acid and cholesterol synthesis. So NADPH is a very valuable factor for the body's biochemical pathways. Now, what we're gonna focus on on this video is what you see here in red, right, glutathione. The main goal in part two of this little mini-series, if you will, is that we need to be able to reduce glutathione, right? So in order to do that, we need NADPH. So then the next logical question is, well, why the hell do we need glutathione? Well, glutathione is required for free radical detoxification. So as you can see here, a lot of these pathways lend itself to one another because they're generating things that the next step needs. So for example, and just to take a big step back, free radical detox requires reduced glutathione, but reduced glutathione requires NADPH, and NADPH comes from the HMP shunt. So really, working backwards, I could have taught, you to the, taught this to you and said, we need the HMP shunt to make NADPH, to reduce glutathione, to process free radicals. So as you can see, it is really important that we hit these one at a time, right? We start with the HMP shunt, we make NADPH, NADPH allows an enzyme, which you'll learn about in part two of this mini series, to reduce glutathione, and then reduced glutathione can actually handle free radical detoxification. So there's a lot of interworking biochemistry here, and you have to understand the big picture in order to really appreciate what's going on and get your questions right on test day. So with that said, we're gonna start again by talking about the HMP shunt, and this time we're gonna walk through the pathway. Now remember from way earlier in the Dirty Biochemistry series, we talked about glycolysis, and glycolysis starts with glucose, and the first step in glycolysis is that that glucose actually goes to glucose 6-phosphate. Now I've shown that here in blue, but then, of course, glycolysis could continue all the way downstream until glucose is ultimately converted into pyruvate. Now, the reason that this is relevant when we talk about the HMP shunt is that it's right here at this glucose 6-phosphate step in glycolysis that that glucose 6-phosphate can actually pivot and leave glycolysis. So instead of ultimately being formed into pyruvate, it can actually kind of take a U-turn and enter the HMP shunt. So this thicker black arrow represents the beginning of the HMP shunt. So our initial, pro our initial reactant here is glucose 6-phosphate leaving glycolysis and going into the HMP shunt. Now, glucose 6-phosphate in the HMP shunt 
will be converted into 6-phosphogluconolactone. Okay, it's a funny name, but 6-phosphogluconolactone. And the enzyme that does that conversion is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, also sometimes referred to as G6PD. Now, G6PD is the highest yield enzyme that you'll need to know in this part one of the HMP shunt. Now, just for completeness sake, 6-phosphogluconolactone can actually go through two further steps, which will conclude the HMP shunt. So it can be converted into 6-phosphogluconate by the enzyme gluconolactonase. And then that 6-phosphogluconate can be converted into ribulose 5-phosphate by the enzyme 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase. But I want to make one thing very, very clear. For the purposes of USMLE and COMLEX, you only need to know the first step of the HMP shunt. That is to say that you only need to know that glucose 6-phosphate gets converted into 6-phosphogluconolactone by G6PD, also known as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Those final few steps you can know for completeness sake, and maybe you should know them for the purposes of in-class exams, like your actual biochemistry exam that you're taking in medical school. But if you're learning this for the purposes strictly of USMLE or COMLEX, then you only need to know that first step. So this is what you should keep in mind. This is the big picture of the HMP shine. Again, pretty easy, right? Just one step. What's really important to know and becomes incredibly high yield is to understand that during this step, during this one and only step that you need to know in the HMP shunt, we actually need NADP plus and we convert it into NADPH. So that enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase requires NAD, NADP plus and during this step we'll convert it into NADPH. So remember at the start of this lecture, I told you that the main and the only goal of the HMP shunt was to produce NADPH. So you can see that here in blue that it's actually meeting its goal, right? The HMP shunt is converting G6P into 6-phosphogluconolactone through the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And it's during this one and only step that you should know for the purposes of USMLE and COMLEX that NADPH is formed from NADP+. So in this one single step, the HMP shunt has done for the body's biochemistry what it's designed to do. Now, a couple important points about the HMP shunt. One, it occurs in the cytoplasm. Two, the primary organs where the HMP shunt is taking place is occurring in the liver, in the mammary glands, and in the adrenal cortex, okay? So these are some high-yield facts about the HMP shunt that you really should memorize. So I've got an awesome dirty medicine mnemonic to help you memorize this. When I think of HMP shunt, I think of HMP, hepatic, mammary, and periphery. So H for hepatic tells me that the HMP shunt occurs in the liver. M for mammary is the second letter in HMP, HMP, M for mammary. So it's occurring in mammary glands. And then HMP, P for periphery of the adrenal gland. So the periphery or the outer part of the adrenal gland is going to be your adrenal cortex. So HMP, hepatic mammary periphery of adrenal. That helps me remember exactly where the HMP shunt is occurring so that, it, that if a question shows up on USMLE or COMLEX about where this is actually happening, you've got my awesome dirty medicine mnemonic. So here's where we are with the HMP shunt. Again, to quickly summarize, we took glucose 6-phosphate and we ripped it right out of the glycolysis first step. And that glucose 6-phosphate was converted into 6-phosphogluconolactone. The enzyme that did this conversion was glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. This is the one and only step that you should memorize about the HMP shunt. Now, it was during this one and only step that NADP plus was converted into NADPH. And again, the only goal of the HMP shunt is to produce NADPH. It occurs in the cytoplasm, it occurs in the liver, mammary glands, and adrenal cortex, which you remember by saying HMP, H for hepatic, M for mammary, and P for periphery of the adrenal. So that's the big summary of what we've talked about so far. And just to leave you with a little beautiful conclusion to help segue into part two, where we'll talk about glutathione, this is where we are so far. So G6P gets converted to 6-phosphogluconolactone, and the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is doing that conversion. But that enzyme is also converting NADP plus into NADPH. And as we'll soon learn in part two of this little mini-series, the generation of NADPH fuels some other reactions that this will be very closely tied to.
please proceed to the next video to learn about glutathione reduction.